Hi you guys, I am ready for our module 17 review. So we're on page 453 in our math workbook, so make sure you have that and a pencil and we'll get right into it. So we're starting with our vocabulary in our vocabulary box. It says gram, kilogram, liquid volume, liter, and mass. Number one says a bottle of juice holds about one blank of liquid. Okay, so think about what units do we use to measure liquid? Out of these options, gram, no, that's not liquid. Kilograms, not liquid. Liquid volume, well, pff, that's what it is, not how we measure it. Liter and mass, so this one would be one liter. That is how we measure vol volume. Number two says blank is the amount of liquid in a container. That would be liquid volume. Liquid volume. Number three says a paper clip has a mass of about. So we know it's not gonna be mass because that's in the sentence. Hmm, not gonna be liter, not gonna be liquid volume. Okay, so we have two options two units of measuring mass, gram and kilogram. Which one are we gonna use? Do you remember our benchmarks that we talked about during lesson two? We uh, know that our benchmarks, a kilogram is about the weight of a textbook. And so when we think of a kilogram, think about, okay, a textbook weighs kind of a lot. And then a paper clip is so tiny, it will weigh one gram. So those are our benchmarks, or like I like to call them anchors. Those are our anchors. Okay, uh, number four, concepts and skills. About how many liters of water are in the container shown? Estimate to the nearest liter. So if we look at our container, the bottom number usually tells us what we're counting by. That first number is a two. So you can see that we're counting by twos and we're skipping every line. Hmm, so what do we think is in between each even number? That will be an odd number. So we have one, I just wrote a little one at the bottom, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then all the way up to 10. And then remember when we're looking at these containers, um, this picture, it's trying to show you that it's a 3D object. And so the way they drew it is like a circle like that to show you that it's supposed to be 3D. So we look at this front part right here to measure. So let's see where that front part is lined up and it is right at the three. So this is three liters full. Number five, Stella's baseball cap has a mass that is less than the mass of a brick, but greater than the mass of a ring. Less than a brick, more than a ring. Which mass could be the mass of her baseball cap? Tell the strategy or tool you will use to answer the question, explain your choice, and then find the answer. Okay, so if we look at our options, five grams. Okay, so if we're thinking about our benchmarks, a paper clip and a textbook, a paper clip is one gram. So think of five paper clips to make five grams. That is not a lot of weight. So I'm gonna hold on to that, but I don't think it's likely that her baseball cap is uh, that light. I think I feel like it's gonna be a bit heavier than five paper clips. Part B says 100 grams. Okay, so now we're taking our benchmark, the paper clip, and timesing 100. So think of 100 paper clips. That's quite a lot. That's gonna be some weight. Um, or we could think of it um, as part of a textbook. So it'd be one-tenth of a textbook. And so that seems about right. So I think that's our best guess right now, but I'm not gonna circle it yet. I'm just gonna put a star by it and double check the rest of our options. Part C says one kilogram. Okay, so again, remembering our benchmarks, one kilogram is what a textbook is about the weight of one kilogram. So a textbook is very heavy. A textbook is gonna be heavier than the baseball cap. The mass of a brick is probably closer to the mass of the textbook. So two kilograms, two textbooks, that's gonna be way too heavy. 
So I think our best guess is B. So when it says to explain your choice and um, tell what strategy or tool you used, I used our benchmarks. Our benchmarks are our paper clip on our textbook, one gram and one kilogram. So that's what I would write down there. Number six, Fiona has some beads that are all the same. Each bead has the mass shown. The total mass of the beads is 56 grams. How many beads does Fiona have? This is story problem. It's the first question I ask myself. What do I need to find? I need to find how many beads does Fiona have? Okay, that's my question. What information am I going to use? I am going to use that the total mass is 56 grams. Each bead has the mass shown. So I'm gonna use that picture. So now I need to talk about, or think about what each piece of evidence represents. The 56 grams gives it away. It tells us it's the total mass, so that's my total. And then each bead weighs five, six, seven, eight grams. So this is my number in each group because each bead, there's one bead, each of them weighs eight grams. I'm trying to find how many beads does Fiona have, so that's my number of groups. Okay, so let's think. If I know my total, I know my number in each group, I'm trying to find the number of groups, what operation does that sound like? Division. So I'm gonna start with my total, 56, Divided by eight equals, we know our math facts, what times eight equals 56? Seven, remember five, six, seven, eight. So the answer is A. Okay, next page. All right, number seven, select all the items that have a mass that would be best measured using grams. Okay, so out of all the objects here, which ones would make sense to measure using the unit grams versus kilograms or anything else? So first we have a sock. Think about a sock. A sock is pretty light. I think I could use grams to measure that for sure. Remember it says select all the items. So I'm gonna choose more than one. Part B is a watch. A watch can be a little bit more heavy, but not too heavy. Definitely not heavier than a textbook. So we'll use grams to measure the weight of a watch. Um, and then part C is a big bag of rice. Okay, I am guessing that this huge sack of rice is weighs a lot more than one textbook. So I think we'd use kilograms to measure that. So I'm not gonna choose part C. Part D is a dog. Oh, so cute, he looks like a German Shepherd. A dog, a big German Shepherd like that, they're so big, so heavy, way heavier than a, a textbook. So not gonna use grams to measure a dog. And then lastly, part E is a piece of paper. Piece of paper is so light. Definitely use grams to measure a piece of paper. So we have A, B, and E as our answers. All right, number eight. If Ming places a crayon on the right pan, the two pans will be even or balanced. How many grams of mass does the crayon have? So the question is, how many grams of mass does the crayon have? Did I say how many crayons of mass? How many grams of mass? I don't remember what I said. Okay, if Ming places a crayon on the right pan, so right here, so imagine our crayon. There's my crayon. Kind of looks more like a marker, but that's okay. So if I put this here, the two balance will be the same, or the two sides will be balanced. They'll be the same. So I need to look and count the weight of this side because this side is heavier because it's more uh, weighted down. So 20, 30, 31, 32. So we have 32 grams over here. And then we have 10, 20, 15, 16, 17, 18 grams on the other side. So I have to think, okay, 
So the 18 grams that's already on the balance, or already on the scale, plus the crayon would equal 32 grams. So basically what I'm saying is 32, or sorry, not 32, 18 plus some number, I'm gonna use C for crayon, plus the crayon equals 32 grams. So then I'll use what I know about fact families to rewrite this and I'll say 32 minus 18 equals C, the weight of the crayon. So then I just have to do 32 minus 18. So right away I'm looking at the ones place and I know I cannot take eight away from two. So I'm gonna regroup it, I'm gonna draw over here so I have space. So I'm gonna bust this up into 30 plus two and then uh, regroup a 10, so change it to 20 plus 12. Now I can do 12 minus eight is four. See that? And then 20 minus 10, right? And I did 10 because 10 and eight is 18. So 20 minus 10 is 10. So then I put those together and I get 14. 10 plus four is 14. So the crayon, the weight of, the mass of the crayon is 14 grams. So I did a lot of work and it got a little messy and that's okay. So I put a box around my answer so that I could see it right away. Okay, last question. Brian and Yuri have same sized containers with different amounts of water. About how many fewer liters of water does Yuri's container have? So how many fewer liters of water does Yuri's container have? So first we have to compare, then we have to find out the difference between Brian's container and Yuri's container. So they're the same containers. And so this one is divided into, or we're counting by 50. So 50, 100, 150, 200 liters. And so Yuri's, it looks like Yuri's at 50 liters, and then I'm gonna use the scale on Yuri's to measure Brian's container. It looks really close to the 150 mark. So Brian has 150 liters of water. So now I wanna know about how many fewer liters of water does Yuri's container have? I know Yuri is less than Brian's, Yuri's amount of water is less than Brian's amount of water, but by how much? I wanna know the difference. So I will do 150 minus 50, and that will get me 100 liters. So the answer is part B. All right, that was the last question. I hope this went well for you. Um, let me know if you need anything, and good luck on the practice test. Love your guts. Bye.